So today we are talking about derivatives. If we have y is equal to x squared, for example, we'll have for every y, our variable will change on square, I mean by square. So if we, for example, have our variable x will be 2, it'll be 4. If we have variable of 3, it'll be 9 and so on. And so this is our parabola. And this is essentially what uh, every function and every relation between function, value of y, and variable that we can change, x. This is our relation between them. So now, if we take a look at this graph that we have here, f of x, let's take some value of x. So this will be x0, or initial value for x. For this value of x, we will have some value of y. Now let's add to our x0 value some other values so that we will have another point that we will call x0 plus delta x because for our initial value we just added another value that we called delta x. So that means this length is equal to delta x. So we changed our initial value to some other value, delta x. So here we will have x0 plus delta x, new value. And of course for new value, so it'll be y0 plus delta y. So here we changed x0 to x0 plus delta x. And from here we can say that our delta y value which is between these two values, will equal to, which we can just say as we said before, like this, f of x0 plus delta x, because this is a function of this value, x0 plus delta x. It'll be minus our initial value, y0, or we can say same thing, f of x0. Let's just remember this equation because it will be very important. So here we can just draw a kind of triangle with these values. Delta x here, delta y here, and our third side of the triangle will be this uh, kind of segment line, I think. And if we take a look at this closer, here we can say that we have some angle alpha. And what will be the function of this angle? Function of this angle is tangent angle alpha equals to delta y divided by delta x. Uh, so here tangent is equal to opposite, which is delta y over adjacent, which is delta x. But of course, this just comes from ev uh, defining every function by itself. But now, let's take this value of delta x and make it so small, very, very small, that it will be so close to our x0 value that it's not even noticeable. And what it will be uh, on the graph, it'll be something like this. It'll be just a tangent line for this point that we have here, so that we can take a limit of this delta x value, because we want it to be approached to zero. It'll be very, very close to zero, but never approach it. So it'll be limit where delta x is approaching zero of our this function, ta tangent alpha which equal to delta y divided by delta x. Or we can say here, it'll be, again, limit. So it'll be something like this. And essentially, this limit, we can just call, let's say, what we can call this limit. I don't know, let's just call it derivative. Derivatives, usually, we will write as follows. So it'll be our function, initial function, uh, let's call it y, and this comma at the top, 
uh, we call it y prime or we can call it f prime of our function or our variable x or any value will be here or the most used form is like this so we take dy uh, d just represents very 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 small number uh, it's uh, I think it's same as delta delta y dy delta x dx but here we explicitly say that this value is very 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 small the most used case I think and most familiar thing case for some people for many people it'll be finding uh, speed or velocity so yeah this was derivative I hope you got something from this video and it wasn't too complicated thank you for watching until this point of time and uh, I will do I think I will do follow-up video with examples maybe I'm not sure but yeah this was derivative thank you for watching and I'll see you next video